see. Okay, uh, so while Max is sharing his screen, I just want to mention um, on the Blackboard, if you look into uh, the prime, prime content folder, you will see there is resource to access SolidWorks. Okay, there is a one link there. So anyone who doesn't have access to SOLIDWORKS through one of the UTSA campus, you guys can actually uh, access to SOLIDWORKS from your homes using UTSA VDI, the virtual uh, desktop interface. So just go into the link, they have two or three different PDFs um, mentioning all the steps that you're gonna need to access SOLIDWORKS from your computer and just go from there. Okay, no so license will be given for an offline in installation. So it will be a virtual desktop for you guys. Okay, so it's either work on it from at UTSA campus or through that VDI. Yes. All right, cool. All righty. Um, I think uh, projects and homework are, are, are good, but I mean, this is just a voluntary workshop for everyone involved here. So the joke is kind of, you know, that the whose line it is anyway, whose line is it anyway thing. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. You know, you just, you do what you want to do when you want to do it. <clears throat> um, this is meant to kind of give people just a little bit of experience, a little, little leg up. So I'm going to start off uh, with just a, some broad strokes and then we're going to get right into SOLIDWORKS. So go ahead and open it up in the background. It can take a little while to load depending on where you're at. And there are plenty of computers in here. I'm looking out at, uh, what's your name? Adrian. Adrian. Adrian's the only one here and there's 20 available computers. So for starters, um, <clears throat> generally when you're designing something, the workflow is, you know, you conceptualize it, you try and sketch it or draw it, then you make a 3D model of it. Then you simulate it to see if you need to change anything. Then you go back, you change your design, simulate, and you reiterate until, until you have a finished, uh, a finished assembly or a finished product. Uh, and then you go and you fabricate it and you test it to see if it meets your expectations. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a bunch of little parts um, and we're going to assemble this brake pedal and then we're gonna sim uh, simulate it. Hopefully we get to that. See, if I was walking around, it might take you know, two hours. Uh, I imagine a lot of people are gonna get lost and maybe we can redo this again on Thursday with it when you, when you all are attending here, if you, if you want to. <clears throat> so I went ahead and did some research. Um, one of the things that kind of confused me starting out was what is the difference between CAD and 3D modeling? Uh, there are some, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I've uploaded that just has some research done for y'all. Here are some excellent examples of what's been done, can be done in SOLIDWORKS, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360, Rhinoceros. Um, and here are some excellent exa examples of what can be done in 3D modeling. So the main difference between CAD and 3D modeling is that with 3D modeling, you're manipulating mesh points on the surfaces of objects and you are basically sculpting. Um, with CAD, you're doing parametric modeling. You're defining each point in each curve with relevance to some kind of reference. Because the end, in the end, you're gonna want these parts to move together and work together and slide against each other or rotate in each other. And when you change a hole in one part that a, a shaft is going through, you want to be able to modify these parameters together. You want to associate the parameters in the model. And if you change one, you want the other one to change as well. So CAD is parametric modeling. <clears throat> and the two or three big players in the game, of course, are Autodesk and SolidWorks. And then there's a free one from, um, what is it called? Uh, Linux called uh, Libre. Um, um, some of y'all, I'm sorry. Where's where's the free one? Here it is, Libre. And then there's um, uh, Rhinoceros and a few others. Here are some 
3D modeling softwares, some popular ones you might have heard of, Blender. This includes all of them. And this is the popularity as of 2016, like in industry. I think it is technically, it is the most, there you go, the most trialed CAD programs in industry, CAD and 3D modeling. And here's the most trial trials or overall CAD market share as of 2016. It's hard to get up-to-date market information. I think a lot of times you have to pay for it and I did not want to pay for it. So SolidWorks is the lion's share as of 2016, but if you combine all of the Autodesk, Autodesk owns Fusion 360, AutoCAD, uh, Autodesk Inventor, if you combine all of those, then this company is larger, Autodesk. So you're probably gonna have to do deal with one or the other in industry, SolidWorks or Autodesk. Um, and here are some excellent videos. I think a lot of them are time-lapse of people designing and building things. Uh, if you have time to go through those, those are kind of fun. So one of the things you have to keep in mind when designing, and this is kind of something you don't learn in you know, CAD, is you kind of have to know a little bit about the fabrication processes that you're going to be using to make the things you want to make. You're going to need to kind of have a general understanding of gears and shafts and bearings, epoxy. When are you going to epoxy? When are you going to weld? Um, are you going to see it? Are you going to lathe? Are you going to use a lathe to make this or a mill? That kind of thing. And then, of course, everyone's favorite 3D printing. 3D printed parts aren't as strong as uh, parts that have been cut or even molded uh, and cast. So all this uh, is a factor. Uh, so if you go ahead and open up SolidWorks, I'm going to give you a description of the program. Uh, maybe you have this pop up. You're not going to have these because these are previous examples that I've worked on. I'm going to go to new part. And there's a chance, there's a pop up asking you what unit system you want to work with. I would just choose IPS inch pound seconds. Um, how do I hide this? There you go. Um, if you didn't get the option, then the first thing we can do is come up here to preferences. We can come over here to document properties. We can come out down here to units and we can select IPS inch pound second so that we're all on the same page. Just to interrupt a little, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. I just want to add, uh, so there is also a video uploaded on Blackboard for the same purpose. If you're not sure what you're doing here, or uh, you know, but in case uh, how to change those, there is one of a uh, video called setting up the units in SOLIDWORKS. Just follow the steps from there and uh, it should answer your question. The same what Max was explaining. Okay. And I went and I found out the names of all the things that you're looking at, the, the user interface. Let me see here. The user interface has a bunch of toolbars and things crowding around the edges of your workspace, which is this central area here, um, the graphics area. You've got the task pane over on the right. You've got the command manager up in the top center. You've got a heads up view toolbar, maybe. Let's see if I have that. Yep, got it. You've got this thing, the flat design tree and the breadcrumbs um, display. Uh, they're not here yet. I don't have any parts. Um, you've got your graphics area. I'll show you these planes in a second. And you've got the feature manager design tree. It is really helpful to know uh, what these toolbars and things are called because sometimes you'll click on something and you'll drag it and it'll disappear and you'll want it to come back or you'll need it to come back and you want to know what it was called. So the, I, this is hopefully going to be helpful to a lot of you. It's just slide seven in the SolidWorks that I uploaded to uh, the content folder on Blackboard. Um, so for starters, let's look over here at the feature manager tree over here on the left. This is a list of all the items in your, it's kind of a list of all the items in your display. So right now you have the front plane, which I can select. 
the top plane, the right plane, and the origin. This is gonna be the materials of your part. We're not gonna mess with that yet. Annotation, sensors, history. I'm not gonna mess with any of these. These are the references and objects and sketches in your part that we're gonna be working on. So this is a list from here down is a list and you can select more than one of them. I can hold control as you do in most Windows or even Apple or Linux machines. And I can select more than one thing. And I can see all of the things that I've selected on my graphics area, in my work area. I'm gonna show you now how to pan. If you hold the middle mouse button and you roll around in the graphics area, you are pivoting your perspective. If I hold control middle mouse button, I am panning. If I hold alt middle mouse button, I am rotating. That one's kind of confusing, I never use that. If I hold shift, middle mouse button, I am zooming. You can also zoom in and out just by rolling the middle mouse wheel. So the things that I use most are pivot by holding the middle mouse button and control pivot to move around and then zoom in and out. If you ever need to deselect whatever you've got selected, hit escape. A lot of times I'm just spamming escape because I've accidentally selected something and it is throwing off the assumptions that the program thinks I'm trying to make here. Oh, you're trying to draw a line from this point to that point. No, no, I accidentally had that first point selected. I don't want to draw a line there. So I'm hitting escape a lot. It's, a, it's going to be, a, you're going to be using escape a lot. Um, and these are hidden <coughs> by design. Uh, when we start drawing on them, they will start to get in the way. You can show them if you want by right-clicking show. Now, when I hit escape, I always see front plane, for example. I don't typically like to do that. Uh, the starting reference planes, I typically keep hidden. Um, uh, another thing is sometimes when you're, let's do this, when you're pivoting around or moving around your part, all of a sudden, MATLAB will forget what you are pivoting around and it will send your, your sketch off to infinity. And if that happens, you come up here to the heads up toolbar and you click zoom to fit and you will come back to your part, to your origin, to your part where everything is in view. So if you ever get lost, hit zoom to fit. So what we're gonna be working on in these SOLIDWORKS is we're gonna be making this. And the way you make uh, an assembly like this in SOLIDWORKS is you start with parts. So we're gonna start with the simplest part, which is gonna be the base. Then we're gonna make the clevis arm here. We're gonna make this collar. We're gonna make the pedal arm, and then we're gonna make the pedal face. The way that you create parts in SOLIDWORKS is you typically have a reference frame or a reference plane that you start a sketch on, then you extrude that into the Z axis to make a three-dimensional object. So let's go ahead and start by clicking on front plane. Uh, if you want, uh, let's see, when you click on front plane the first time, you should see this little thing here to start a sketch, or you can come up here to the sketch tab in the command manager. And while this is selected, you can hit sketch. If nothing is selected when you hit sketch, it's gonna ask you what you wanna start a sketch on. And this thing is gonna appear and it's gonna have you want to either select in your graphics area or select in this list what you wanna sketch on. So I'm gonna sketch on the front plane and it's gonna say, okay, it's going to take your perspective normal to your front plane and you are gonna enter it into a sketch which you can see down here in the feature, uh, feature tree. So. Everything below this line is either hidden or it's a work in process uh, or it's called suppressed in, the, in, the, in this program. It's called being suppressed. In other words, it's not in your part file yet. So we are in sketch one and you can tell you're in sketch one because when you go to the sketch tab, the only thing you can do is exit sketch one up here. Whereas if we had, if we exit, 
and we're on the sketch tab, now it is sketch. If nothing is in a sketch, when you exit a sketch, it's, boop, it's gone, no more sketch. The moment we add a single line, for example, I'm gonna come up here to the line tool. I'm gonna to start at the origin. I'm gonna draw a line arbitrarily out here. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna get out of the line sketch tool. I'm gonna hit exit. Now, because there was a line in this sketch, it is in my feature tree. What is this called again? Yeah, feature, uh, my design tree. Once you have exited a sketch, you can go back into the sketch by right-clicking on it and going to edit sketch. Here's the front plane. Let's say I want to move around or pivot and I go off to this weird perspective and I don't want to be there anymore. And I think, oh, I'm gonna go to zoom to fit and it's still off. Zoom to fit just takes you to the center. It doesn't re it doesn't take you normal. What you do is you come over here to the front plane, you right click and you click normal too. That way you're back in an appropriate sketch orientation. So let's go ahead and start on this object here. It's a two inch by two inch, one eighth inch sheet uh, for the base. So I'm gonna start by drawing a two inch by two inch square. I can use lines. I can use the square tool. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna use lines first and I'm gonna draw these lines arbitrarily and sloppily. When I'm done, uh, so about the line tool, I can click and release. My mouse is now totally released. I'm not holding any buttons. And if I click and release again, then I have another one. And if I click and release again, then I have another one. If I click and hold, then when I release, there is no line anymore. So I can click yes, no, whatever. If I want to remove what I just did, I can, oh, excuse me. Well, that's new. I use a selection tool and I, all I did was hold left click and I drew around the points, the vertices and lines that I wanted to select and I released and now they are selected. If I want to deselect them, I can either hit escape or I can left click somewhere in my work area. So I want to select these and I want to delete them. Now I'm gonna work on making this a square. So I'm gonna talk about uh, relations. So up here on the hide show icon, it looks like an eyeball in the heads up display. I wanna make sure that this right angle is selected. The view sketch relations symbol. There is one sketch relation visible on my screen now. It is this green thing right here. This is the coincidence relation. When I started the line, I started it on the origin. So that point is now constrained to being coincident with the origin of my sketch. If I want to remove that relation, I select the little green relation and I hit delete. Now I can move the point off of the origin. There's a whole bunch of relations. Um, I'm gonna select this line and I'm going to make it a vertical line. If it throws my entire sketch around it, it'll do that, uh, be cautious. So now there's a vertical constraint on this line. I can select this line and I can make it horizontal. Uh, let me walk around and see if everyone's caught up. Just, if you need me to slow down for a second, I'm just gonna let everyone catch up. So when you start with the square tool or rectangle, 
the vertical and horizontal constraints are automatically built in to the square. So if you want to change it to not be horizontal or vertical, you have to manually delete those. Uh, Uh, so with a square tool, you couldn't do something like this, for example. I'm going to select this line and this line by holding control. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select one line, then I'm going to select the other line. Uh, the selected entities list appears here. And I can now add a whole nother set of relations. Instead of just being horizontal or vertical, I can make these lines collinear. I can make them perpendicular, parallel. I can make them equal in length. I can fix them in place. I'm going to add the perpendicular constraint here. Now they're perpendicular. I'm going to do the same for this line and this line by holding control and selecting these two, for example. I'm going to make them perpendicular. And I'm going to select the last two lines and make them perpendicular. Why don't I need to select this line and this line? Well, if you remember from those horrible proofs you had to do in high school, uh, it's one of those rules. A line perpendicular to another line is perpendicular. The original line is also parallel or some nonsense like that. So doing it this way, I can cause this to rotate. So I'm going to fix this here to the origin. And I'm going to grab, well, it's not being friendly to me right now. Uh, let me make all of these equal in length. I'm going to select each line holding control to form this list here, line one, two, three, and four in the selected entities. And I'm going to make them all equal. This is now a square, but there's no horizontal or vertical constraint. And you can, you can tell these lines are not constrained because they are blue. If they were constrained, they'd be black. That's one of the little color codings that SOLIDWORKS uses. So what happens if I grab this point here and I move it around? If you used the square tool, you wouldn't be able to do this because you'd have horizontal and vertical constraints. So let me go ahead and add one horizontal constraint here. Another quick pop-up constraint appears here, or you can come over here and add it in the properties menu. I'm gonna add horizontal. Now you'll notice that this line turned black and this line turned black. But why are these lines black? Well, because the actual dimensions of this square have not been defined yet. So I'm going to come up here to Smart Dimension in the Sketch toolbar. I'm going to select a line. I'm going to left click and release. And now I have this. I don't have to click and hold. I can click and release. And I'm going to click out here somewhere where it's convenient. It's going to ask me what I want it to be. I'm going to make it two. Enter. Now, every line is black. <clears throat> when I press escape to get out of smart dimension, you gotta be careful. Sometimes you're gonna have smart dimension selected and you don't want it selected. If I try and grab this vertice and move it around, nothing moves, nothing changes. And that is because this has been completely defined. There is no other configuration this can be in because all four lines are perpendicular. One of them is horizontal. It is coincident. This corner is coincident with the origin. The lines are all of equal length, and this line is defined as two inches. So this is completely constrained. It cannot be anything else. A mistake you can make in your sketch is you can over constrain something. So I'm going to add another dimension in here. <clears throat> I'm going to go to smart dimension. Another way you can define the length of a line is you can select its two endpoints. I'm, I'm not going to use control. When you have smart dimension selected, you don't need to use control to compile a list. It's already compiling it as you click. I'm gonna select this point and I'm gonna select this point and that will give me the distance between these two. I'm gonna click out here and it's gonna give you an error because there's no other value that this could be. It's gotta be two because of the way I've set up this square. It's gonna ask me if I want this dimension driven or driving. In other words, do I want to leave it as a driving variable in this, in this shape, or do I want to make it just an indicator or do I want it to be just a result basically? If I leave it driving, I'm gonna have these nasty yellow warnings saying that my sketch is overdefined. Let's see, 
remove this. Uh, there's conflicting definitions. I could come back to this. I'm going to select this. Come over here to the uh, feature manager over here. Come over here to the other tab. I'm going to select driven, or I can just delete it and make it again and make it driven. I'm going to make it driven, and we've relaxed this drawing. Now it's not overdefined. This is gray, though. It is not a driving variable. It is a driven variable. <clears throat> it is just there to indicate the dimension. If we change two over here by double clicking on this, so we change it to three, that one also changes to three. It's driven. I'm going to change it back to two. I'm going to click exit sketch up here because we've completely defined the one perspective of the part. Now sketch two is here or sketch one, depending on how, how closely you're following. Uh, we can also rename the sketches if we want, but let's not worry about that for now. <clears throat> I'm going to pivot and roll around so you can see this. It is just a, I'm gonna select everything by holding shift as you can with lists, sorry. As you can with lists in like File Explorer or Finder for Apple, you can use Shift or Control. If you hold Shift when you select items, it selects everything between the two items you selected. If you hold Control when you select items, it selects them individually. So I'm gonna pivot around here and show you that now I have a sketch just kind of floating out in space with one point on the origin. The sketch is on the front plane and the sketch is still kind of visible, just hanging out there, no real significance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to feature and I'm gonna select the farthest to the left option here, which is extrude boss base. It asks what I want to extrude. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna select sketch two. If you try and reach out here and select a line or something, you can have some kind of weird assumptions sometimes that the program makes. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Also, if you're in sketch two, I'm going to go back to editing. If you're in sketch two and you go straight to boss, it automatically assumes that that's the sketch you want to select for boss. So what it does is it exits your sketch. Well, you're, you're no longer able to edit the sketch when you're trying to do boss extrude. So in boss extrude, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make it one eighth of an inch as I indicated on our diagram here. A lot of times when you're buying steel or aluminum, at least in America, you're gonna buy it, you know, as a gauge thickness, and it's typically gonna be, you know, a fraction of, of an inch. So one eighth, I'm gonna select okay. I'm gonna deselect it by, by clicking out here in the graphics area or pressing escape a bunch of times. And I'm gonna pivot around and show you what we have. We now have the base plate for the, um, the brake pedal. I'm gonna come up here to materials uh, and I'm gonna right click and do edit material. Materials are important when you are trying to evaluate the mass of an object or the center of mass, or when you're trying to uh, test its strength later in simulation. <coughs> or when you want to render it in three dimensions, in three, uh, when, you, when you want to render it to, to put it in a PowerPoint show or something like that. You want to show people your brake pedal you know, that you made in CAD. You want it to look pretty. You don't want it to look like this, like it was coming out of Minecraft or something. So you're going to add a material. You're going to do edit material. And uh, there are some favorites. Where are these favorites? Oh, let me close this real quick. If you just right click here, there's a bunch of favorites already here. I'm gonna select plain carbon steel. So this entire part, this entire file, I could have another piece of metal next to it, but this entire file, uh, file now has one body as indicated by this one here, and it is plain carbon steel. So when you test it in simulation, SolidWorks has on file the strength and elastic modulus and yield strength of plain carbon steel. 
So when you simulate it, you'll, you'll take all that into effect. You don't have to manually put in the material properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a base plate. I'm just, the last time I did this was like a year ago. Let me see. Yeah, 4 one 2021. Um, so save it as base plate. You, you're not gonna have anything to replace on your computer. Just save it as base plate. And we'll close this part up here in the top right. And we will move on to the next, the clevis arm. Um, may I add something? Oh, yes, please. Please. Okay, for everyone who are accessing SOLIDWORKS through the VDI system, right? So it saves your part files into the virtual uh, system itself. So it will be saved on the virtual computer, so memory. Uh, make sure when you're done uh, creating it, you're closing your VDI, transfer them to your computer because every night at 12 a.m. they reset those computers. So the files you're saving on the virtual computer will not be saved. So, and you don't wanna lo lose any of your progress. So please, once you save it on the virtual computer, transfer it back to your original computer, your personal computer. I just wanted to add that. All right. That's not something I knew. I've never used the VDI. I hope I don't have to learn it. So I'm gonna create a new part here. The familiar graphics area will open up. I'm going to go to the front plane here. I'm going to select sketch. And I'm going to start drawing this shape. So I'm going to use three lines, an arc, and a circle to make this shape. So I'm gonna start one corner here. I'm gonna make a line. I'm gonna hold the left button and release. I'm going to hold the left button and release. I'm gonna hold the left button and release. And you can see kind of snap lines for where it thinks you want it. They're not constraints. Uh, some of them aren't constraints. Some of them are like, for example, when I snapped this one, it said, oh, you want it horizontal, got it. And it added the horizontal relation there for this line. It's not always what you want. You've got to kind of look out for what relations are being added. It might be kind of confusing. I'm going to select the circle tool. I was in the line tool, now I'm in the circle tool. And I'm going to create that hole somewhere in here. That's about right. <coughs> and now I'm going to come up here and select the arc tool. There are three um, ways to draw an arc, uh, you can have a tangent point and then some second point out in space or on something else. You can have a center point, then a second point, then a third point along the arc, or you can have three points all along the arc and you can draw uh, an arc. They're all equally good. I'm gonna select a three point arc. I'm gonna say one point is here, one point is here, and one point is, well, that's annoying. I'm sorry, the third point is the middle point. I pressed escape a bunch because I didn't like what was going on. I'm gonna come back up here, select center point. It is one, then you do the, your other end point, then you do your third point. So one, two, <laughs> excuse me. First, I wanna select this option. Then I come over here, one, two, three. This doesn't look quite as good as this one. So let's start adding some constraints so that um, it will. Firstly, let's add a dimension down here, two inches. Right now, this sketch has no dimensions. So when I come up here to smart dimension and I add that first dimension, nothing will change relative to this line but it now knows that two, it just blinked out, put them back in again. It now knows that two is the dimension of this baseline here. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit escape a bunch to get out of smart dimension. And even if you're in a sketch and you hit escape, 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 
it, it's it's going to keep you in that sketch. You have to manually exit the sketch or extrude from your sketch or something like that to get out of a sketch. So uh, let's look at a few of the things in here. I'm going to zoom in. You've got a little plus symbol here, a little plus symbol here. You've got a circle. You've got an endpoint here, endpoint here. You've got lines. So what, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this and this tangent. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this and this tangent. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to select this arc. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add the tangent relation. Now, depending on how you have this laid out, this could be totally wonky. Let me show you what happens uh, if I select this point and drag it in. There you go. I can make this totally wonky. Watch what happens when I select this line and this arc and make them tangent. They're tangent, but in the wrong direction. They still come to one single point of concurrency. It's just that now the shape is like this. And if SolidWorks solves your shape in this form, it's gonna be really hard to get out. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to either control Z and undo it, or you can delete this constraint. You can try and move this back over here. You can try and move this back over here. And you can add tangency in the correct direction. So now it is tangent off here and this little plus here, I'm gonna drag it. Ooh, it's being stubborn. It's moving counterintuitively. So <clears throat> that's annoying. Let's go ahead and make it. There are too many variables here that SolidWorks is trying to, um, to solve for as you drag these vertices around. It doesn't know exactly what you want, but it's finding a solution. So let's add a constraint here. I'm gonna constrain the center of this arc to be on the center of this hole as I have here. It's not shown. Uh, if you don't see, typically in design sketches, if you don't see a center point to an arc and there's another arc inside that arc, they are uh, concentric. So I'm gonna add concentricity for this arc and this arc by holding control and selecting both of them. And I'm gonna come over here and add the concentric. And what it did is it moved the circle up here which is not quite what I wanted. I'm gonna try and move it down. It gives me a little bit more control. All right, I'm gonna zoom back in. These are concentric. What dimensions are they? The circle has a diameter of 0.5 and this arc has a radius of 0.75. I'm gonna come over here to smart dimension. I'm gonna select this hole. I'm gonna drag, click out here to create uh, a dimension out here, I'm gonna say 0.5 and I'm gonna hit enter. Then I'm gonna select this arc. I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna click. I'm gonna select 0.75 for a radius. This is starting to look more familiar. I'm gonna hit escape a few times to get out of smart dimension. Now when I click and drag this around, it looks more like that clevis arm somewhere in here. So let is, let's center this over this line. Fortunately, all lines have midpoints. You just have to kind of find them with your mouse and then you can select them. They're not visible until you're hovering over them and you can select the midpoint, for example, to this line and you can select the center. I'm holding control and I'm selecting the center to this circle and I'm going to add the vertical constraint here. Now we have more and more constraints. Now the only direction I can move this in is up and down. I'm trying to move it left and right, but I can't. I'm trying to move this vertice out, but I can't. I can only go up and down. That is because this arc has been defined as being 0.75. This circle has been defined as being 0.5. This dimension is two. And remember, these lines are tangent here. So this line has to follow this arc now everywhere. The only thing left to define, I believe, is the height here, the distance from the hole to the base plate. So I'm gonna to go to smart dimension. I'm gonna select the center point here. I'm gonna select this line. And it automatically knows that between a line and a point, it's the distance normal to the line. 
if you accidentally, I'm gonna hit escape a couple of times here, go back to smart dimension. I'm gonna accidentally select this point and this point. Now something wild is going on. SolidWorks has a few options for point to point dimensions. One is distance directly between, one is distance vertically, one is distance horizontally. So I could do this and get the exact same results as if I had selected the line, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hit in one inch, I'm gonna hit enter, and there we go. Every arc, every line is now black, which means it has been fully constrained. You cannot click and drag on any of these points. If you add more dimensions, you're going to over constrain. So there is our clevis arm. I'm going to go to features. This time I'm just gonna go straight into a feature. I'm not gonna leave the sketch. I'm going to go to extrude. I'm going to give it our 0.125 dimension. Now, one thing you'll notice is that uh, the program smartly decides what a hole in your part is. It's automatically deciding that there is no material there, which is what we want. But if you want to change that, you come down here to select contours and you make sure to select that and that. And now, for example, the entire thing is being extruded or if I want to delete this, now just the hole is being extruded. And if I delete this hole again, it goes back to its original assumptions. If nothing is selected as contours, its original assumption is what is being extruded. And I'm going to click OK. There we go. There's our clevis arm. Holding the middle mouse button, rolling around. Let me walk around the classroom real quick. So while Max is away, I just want to mention, okay, I've also put this on the chat, but other ways, uh, your goal should always be making the sketches fully defined, uh, because let, let's say you want to change one of the parameters, or if everything is not defined, as Max showed you, uh, the design or the shape might get distorted, or it might give you some output that you don't want. Uh, and in, in industry, uh, you will have to work with different type of shapes every day, and they will just ask you to redefine or reshape those things. So one of your goal will be defining it completely so that if they ask you, okay, change the depth, or let's say change the height of it, even if you do that, it's not messing up with your whole sketch or object design. Uh, that way it will keep still the relations that you've defined at the first uh, goal, and uh, you don't have to start from the scratch, okay? Uh, any questions? Sorry, what was that said? Oh, no, no, I, I was just talking about why someone, everyone needs to fully define the sketch. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was, I was helping Adrian, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, normally, I'd, I'd like to, I like to walk around and make sure everyone's kind of on the same page. It can be kind of difficult when, you know, you accidentally exit a sketch or you accidentally constrain two things together and you're wondering, you know, what the problem is, and I can come up and show you how to how to diagnose the problem yourself. Basically, it's really difficult to do uh, online. <clears throat> uh, next time uh, on Thursday, it can be Syed's lecture, and he will be remote, but I will be in class to help y'all. Um, so I'll still be here. He will be giving the lecture, and I'll be walking around making sure everyone's doing all right. Um, this is, this was meant to be, we're running out of time here. It's kind of like, you know, five minutes left. So this was meant to be kind of a general overview. What I was going to do, uh, I'm going to not save it. What I was going to do is I was going to take all these parts out and I was going to assemble them. And then I was going to simulate them for you. Uh, do, do a static simulation. Uh, is it? Of 
course I replaced the blaze base plate. Okay. So this is being a little wonky here. Oh, there it goes somehow magically. All right. So here's a brake pedal. There's a cylinder there. Any of y'all familiar with, with how brakes work? Uh, it's well, how they used to work, I should say. Uh, now it's all electronic. They used to work by compressing a cylinder of hydraulic fluid and the hydraulic fluid was connected to your actual brake calipers on your wheels. And you would have a mechanical advantage because the depth that you compress this is several times the distance that the brake calipers actually move in order to squeeze the brakes. So it used to be when you squeezed your brake pedal, you were actually compressing fluid that was compressing uh, your, your calipers against your brake pads. So your brake pads against your brake disc, is it? Um, so, well, yeah, anyway, so here is the brake pedal with a little thing that I added on. This isn't part of the simulation. So one of the things you learn to do is you learn to break your assembly down into things that are simpler to simulate on their own. Uh, the complexity of a simulation is based off of what you might call n squared, for example. The complexity of an assembly squared is the difficulty that it is to simulate that thing. So if I divide, if I'm able to divide my simulation in half, the back part and the front part, then half squared plus half squared is half of the overall, um, half squared is one quarter, n squared plus one quarter n squared comes out to one half n squared. I've reduced the complexity of the simulation by one half by dividing it in half. And if I don't even care about the back part, then I've divided the complexity by a factor of four, I've divided into a fourth. So here's my static simulation. Where's my results? Oh, please be there. There you go. There's my stresses and strains by stomping on the brake pedal with, I think I assumed 300 pounds of force. So one of the assumptions I made in order to get rid of this, like you don't have to simulate the entire car to simulate the brake pedal. You don't have to have the entire brake line or calipers to simulate a brake pedal. All you have to do is you remove this and at this connection point here, you assume there is some kind of resistance force. Um, so by making simplifying assumptions, you can simplify without too much loss of accuracy, your results and your simulation. So that is something I'll, I'll get into next time a little bit. This was just an overall workflow. It, it's probably better to get into uh, parts. So Syed uh, on Thursday is going to get into more sketch tools and go over several example problems from the book. You got any uh, anything to add, Syed? Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen for a quick minute and I'll just you know explain some things what we're going to do on next class. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, share. Okay. So on Blackboard, we have already posted the tutorials, which is gonna cover the sketch tools that Max used today to create those solid parts, right? So uh, as per our schedule, the first thing that we're gonna cover is using the sketch tool. The most basic element and most important element is to learn on and know how you're using your sketch tools. So I will urge everyone to please Every Monday when we're posting those videos, just you know, go through them uh, just so that you have some idea. And when we come back during the online session, we can work it out together. Um, so they are already posted. So on th before Thursday, if you have time, just look into those uh, and see how the sketch tools are used. So during the 
say live session, what we will do. So this is already posted on the blackboard, as you can see. So there are a few simple problems. What we, uh, how, what and how they are created is the using the basic sketch tools. Okay, so you will have you you already have access to those tutorials. See if how they are being used and can you use those tools that you have learned from the tutorials to create these objects itself. So the first thing we will do on Thursday is gonna do some of these examples, not all eight of them, but some of those which are a little tough or difficult will take some time and figure out if we can do it together, okay? We will do it one step at a time. And then uh, uh, that will be the first 30 minutes. The last 30 minutes, I will leave it up to you guys so that you guys can practice some of them from here and see if you can create this or if you can complete this. If not, I will help you guys. I, Max and I both will help you guys with completing those. Does it sound like a plan? Do you have any questions? Uh, please let me and Max know. Uh, we'll be here to help you out. Yep, see how Thursday said we'll be giving the lecture remotely, but I will be here in the same room, EB 2.04.26B, uh, just helping y'all out. Yeah, um, uh, Max, if you don't mind, can you put it on the chat also so that whoever is looking into, they will know the room number. Uh, uh, on the meantime, uh, this session is also recorded, so it will I'll upload it tomorrow. Uh, it takes Zoom to you know, save these files and convert for two to three hours. Uh, so I will just uh, upload it tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, with that, okay, today's session, we are done today's session. Uh, if you have any questions, we will be glad to answer them in the remaining two, two minutes or one minute. <laughs> Oh, and also we are post, gonna post the um, pre-workshop survey. Please fill them up. We will need your feedback to know what we are doing and how we should shape our uh, sessions. Uh, I just had one question. Um... Yes. Would I, so say I make those sketches, I won't be able to go to the Thursday one live, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. So I was probably going to do the sketching of them Friday. Do you want me to email them or something so that I, to know okay. if I'm doing it right? So there is no submission at the moment. If you have questions, if you're not sure if you have done them correctly or not, you can always send us an email through Blackboard and we'll be glad to look them uh, up for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, that should be fine. Uh, just reach out to us and we will we, help you out. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Um, and then the other thing was, is there any like certification or whatever I can get at the end of this or later? With uh, the SolidWorks this, is, stuff? this is something. Uh, okay, so for SolidWorks, they do have an official certification system. Uh, we cannot give it to you guys. You have to go through our official channels. But uh, we are actually having a discussion with uh, Jill at the moment. Um, we will update you on that, that if, you if we can give you some type of certification for completing this UTSA workshop. Okay? Yeah, I just wanted something like as dumb as it sounds to just yeah. put for like internships or something. Oh that yeah, I have yeah, like yeah. limited solid works experience. So that will require you guys, I guess uh, that's some requ will require you guys to complete a capstone project or something to make yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, that, that'd be fine with me. I, yeah, I just so wanted to know. That is actually a question uh, on the pre survey. Okay, so please complete the pre survey. So we're asking you if you're interested in doing a capstone project or not. And based on that, we might go into and see if we can provide you with uh, a certification. Okay, cool. Platform. And then is that going to, the survey is going to be uploaded tonight? Yes, in about 10 minutes. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So with this, let's adjourn today's meeting. Uh, let's everyone meet on Thursday. Bye.